Good morning, everyone. This is the DC Incentives Podcast, episode 32. You already know we we got our guy here. He's he our special guest. Uh man, please introduce yourself. Yeah, what's up, man? My name is uh, Derek Walker, currently based out of Dallas, Texas. I do work in all states everywhere, lived in Los Angeles. Um, and just really excited to just have a conversation, man. I'm not anybody special, just a kid from Oak Cliff who has ideas and wants to make them happen. Okay. All right, let's go. Okay, right. let's get it. Um, let, let we can get straight to it. Okay, so uh, talk about uh, you growing up, uh, being a producer. Yeah, I mean, for me growing up, being a creative first uh it's okay, really okay. you know where, where we can start you know and, and and i'll be honest man i didn't really start utilizing my creativity mm-hmm. until my freshman year in high school my dad didn't want me to play football anymore for whatever reason i was pretty good but he just didn't see that as the pathway for me probably wanted to protect your brain yeah no listen <laughs> very much so you know what i'm saying i've got friends who i play ball with and just just from a brain protection standpoint um from just even a social standpoint you know when you work on something like getting to that level that professional level of football where there is a cap right there's a stop there's a point at which you will probably possibly age out right that that creates a a small amount of time but you still got to put an infinite amount of um, uh, effort into it right and so sometimes overcoming that and not realizing that opportunity or that, that opportunity not being real it's sometimes even hard to recover from too. So, you know, like I said, initially I was really disappointed, man. And, and, it, and it inspired me to get into, get active with music. I started playing drums at the church. I got into the marching band uh, here in Dallas, Texas. Eventually got a scholarship, music scholarship to go to Arkansas Pine Bluff, went there. And that's when I started getting more into uh, the social aspect of not just music, but performance overall. So studying broadcast journalism, minoring in marketing, getting involved in theater, helping and working, producing plays and hosting open mics and shows, it's then started to say, man, okay, there's some dollar generating opportunity from that. And even if I go back to high school, I was making almost almost 200 bucks a Sunday playing drums at church. So for me, my creativity was a, a, a pathway or a journey or it created a pathway to a means of something tangible. I can take my ideas and perform with my body in the variable same variable type of way as a football player right you're using your body and your, your body and your body in a, in a different type of we'll say a, generally a more safe way than football um and then being able to get something back from that so every time i play i get dollars when i play drums so even when i was in college i played drums um and then it transitioned like i said into broadcast journalism minoring in marketing theater and just using my ideas and my creativity to create opportunities okay Oh, so, so yeah. oh, go ahead, TC. Go ahead, TC. So basically, you, what you learn from like football and stuff, you just implemented that into other things. <clears throat> so all that energy you had before, absolutely. And 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 the thing I learned about from the thing that football taught me was collaboration. It taught me um, to be disciplined, right? Like not punishment, but discipline. Be committed to seeing a result. And it taught me about the importance of performance, showmanship, and sportsmanship. You know what I'm saying? It taught me how to be part of a team and a collective, but still be able to carve a niche or carve a space for myself to really exude or exist in the trueness of who I am. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So would you, say, would you say your creativity spawned more of a necessity to just have an outlet for, for the energy that you have, or were you trying to look at it more as a, as a monetary opportunity? The initial part of it was about the initial part about me utilizing my creativity was about expression and just having the space to just be creative. I remember being in high school. I was the super artsy kind of guy, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I've always had and understood business, uh, understanding how to have utilize social equity uh, influence and just individualism. I say even for me, I used to sell drawings like i didn't i was in the cluster of kids who can draw in like fourth grade miss dry class um and, and I, I could draw but I, there were guys who could draw better than me so i recognized in them yo you know what you draw better than me how about you draw this and then i was able to sell it so i would spend 
50 cent with them and then I would sell it for 75 cent to someone else. They so would offer child labor. Well, it, it's child labor, but it's child it, it's, it's child entrepreneurship. You know what I mean? We're talking about producing opportunities and, 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 and fulfilling a need. Um, and, okay. and, and I just understood how I just, I'm going to be honest, I understood how it worked. One, my, my, my grandfather was a minister, so I saw that there was a way to, in the most deconstructed way, right? There was a way to have an idea, perform it, or share that, or express that with people, and there would be a transaction that would happen. Uh, the same thing with my aunt. Uh, she was an entrepreneur uh, and had had a salon, a beauty shop. And I watched people come in. She performed. Now, performance exists on whether you're going and, and flipping burgers, whether you're fixing hair, whether you're doing haircuts, whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? Like that. You're you're performing through your energy, through your decisions that you're making, and then someone finds value in it. <clears throat> and since, and there's an exchange. There's an exchange of either goods, ideas, or dollars in many cases. Wow. So you're very observant, basically. Man, was, well, yeah. I listen. I I couldn't listen. I, I just said yesterday, man. I can't afford a lot, but I can pay attention. Ooh. Right. And I didn't grow up with the silver spoon. I didn't grow up. You know, I pretty much grew up uh, probably you know middle middle class, lower middle class. Uh, my mom was a teacher. My dad worked in, uh, in in technology, and that did afford some opportunities to exposure. Uh, I remember I first having internet in like 1993, okay. right? Because that was part of his job and what he had responsibilities for that they had to give him or provide him access to the network. Well, it gave me that too. So where there weren't necessarily opportunities, uh, where they weren't where there weren't necessarily certain opportunities. Uh, there were moments that I paid attention to and that I was observant of and just said, okay, here's how I can apply this. Here's how I recognize this. And I'll be honest, man, the other thing about it is just observing the history of my family and seeing them do what they do. Entrepreneurship reigns supreme. Social equity and being able to connect with people reigns supreme. So it's it's something that's just genetically embedded in me that I can't escape from, even as much as I tried to and wanted to. I can't escape from. Well, talk to me about some of your family influences. Who were the entrepreneurial family members that you looked up to? I mean, the most immediate was my dad. And I can even go as far as say I've learned stories and, and, and heard, uh, had conversations with my grandmother about her grandfather and owning a, a barbecue pit, uh, a barbecue restaurant. You know what I mean? But my dad, first and foremost, he had a nine to five, but I always saw him doing something else you know, a side hustle or just something that was adjacent to what his efforts were already. Uh, and that comes from a standpoint of he, I remember he had a water bit, water filter business. He basically, it was part of a network marketing, but they pulled together a certain amount of people and literally opened up a storefront and was selling water, excuse me, fil fil water filtration systems, right? This is back in the late eighties, early nineties. Something else I saw him do was make t-shirts. Uh, I don't know if y'all remember in living color, they had home in the clown, one of the first sweaters <laughs> yeah, that he was selling homie. was Homie the Clown. They had Homie the Clown and put Homie Don't Play That. Yeah. And selling sweaters, selling t shirts around Christmas time. But I also saw him do something that was centered around social justice um, and social just awareness. He had a shirt called Still in Bondage and it had a mm -hmm. pair of fists wrapped tied up and it said Still in Bondage. And this was around the time um, when there was the in Jasper, Texas. They took the tied the gentleman up behind the truck and drug him, and there was the conversation about you know we're still in bondage. The conversation about how we're still limited, we're still oppressed, and we're still marginalized. And he was able to do that through t-shirts. You know, could he draw the best? No. Could he design? Not necessarily. But he knew how to have this idea, have this creativity, apply it to something tangible, and exchange that with someone, whether it be for dollars, whether it be for more awareness he was able to identify that moment and opportunity and do that. So, I mean, that, that with him was, 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 you know, was my real sense of seeing who and what an entrepreneur was first without even knowing what it was. Cause it wasn't popular back in the late eighties. Okay. Nice. Nice. Uh, Yo, if I, I already, you, you touching on, you, you, you touching on things that people really need to hear. Uh, what, what, so, Talk me through people's passion and people's creativity of how can they, because nowadays um, 
being a uh, generation um, revenue is not uh, optional anymore. You know, when they talk about, you know, seven figure income and stuff like that, or multiple streams of income. So how can they do that with their creativity? I think one of the best things you could do as it relates to monetizing your creativity is to understand who you are and what you have to offer, right? Understanding your strengths is really, really vital and really, really important to understanding how to uh, to utilize that and, and, and make that something that other people want to connect with. Your your passion, your energy should solve problems, right? Mm. Uh, just just as a creative, my cre- my ability to make a, a, a beat or music or produce a show fit, fills a void. It fills a need, basically, what someone else identified. I think the other thing we can do is really understand where our efforts are. Right. Because what we do the most, what we do consistently is where we see the most results most consistently. Uh, <clears throat> having a dream or a desire to do, you know, to, to work in a particular space, a particular injury, industry. I think that's I think that's uh, important. But I also think the idea of ambition sometimes makes us miss the mark. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think sometimes the idea of ambition makes us miss the mark because we don't become laser focused on where our efforts and where our results are getting us. If I'm consistently working in a telecom space, there's something about what I'm doing every day, every moment, quite often, that drives to me having a certain level of expertise based on those experiences that I'm having. So I should be able to contribute at another level no matter what I do with, no matter who's around me as it relates to being able to not just solve problems, but add value. Uh, so now we start by, from a standpoint of business. The bigger the problem you can solve, the more opportunities or the better opportunity to, to generate dollars. Mm. So so when it comes to producing, what, because that's your field of creativity, right? Producing um, music. What, what problems do you solve through your creativity? Yeah, so one of the problems I solve through my creativity is the channel of music production, right? So I started off performing music as a drummer in church. There was a need for rhythm, there was a need for beats. And I'll be honest, somebody else didn't show up and I stepped in, never had drum lessons, never had anything. That was my immediate, my first level of understanding how to feel. Wait, so so you just stepped in, you never played the drums before? No. Get the hell out of here. So you never played the drums and you just said, God got this and boom, 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 boom. Yeah, I mean, I said God got it, and the first thing I said was I got it. I had some some wooden, uh, you know, the cardboard hangers. Yeah, I was mm-hmm. playing with that. You know what I mean? And, and and the other part about that is utilizing, understanding what you have around you, and utilizing what you have at that moment. Right? It, it was it was rather I don't say it was simple for me, but it made sense. The the logic mm-hmm. of it was simple, is in my understanding. Now, did it take effort? Absolutely. Did I eventually understand? and learn how to work, learn what my rudiments are. Yeah, I learned how to uh, connect with other people. But what I'm saying, what I said at the very beginning about the discipline of football, understanding collaboration, commitment, consistency, performance, sportsmanship, those principles apply to any type of performance. So I've got the basis of understanding to do something. It's just me now understanding the better, the technique and the mechanics and the philosophy of said performance um, or productive uh, means, right? So I started out playing drums, uh, got into the high school band, started playing snare drum. That forced me to understand what rudiments are. Rudiments are like your the numbers one through 10. They're the foundation for every other number. So the rudiments, once you learn your rudiments and you realize rudiments are in every single pattern that you perform or that you play, well, now I can play it on this one drum when I've got that many, one option, but when I have multiple drums and cymbals and hi-hats and kick, I can apply the same principles and the foundational understanding of this performative art to what I need to feel or what I need to do in the moment. It just sounds like you have crazy confidence, low key. Yeah, really, because... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you just, you just said, you just pick up the sticks and you just hit the drums. Like... That's crazy, like how you just picked that up and you made that into a skill. You know? Yeah, I, I, I will, and I'll be, man, like there was a certain amount 
of confidence that existed. And I think above confidence, mm-hmm. I had courage. I was willing to make a decision because the results of that, I don't know what they are. Like I didn't, I wasn't thinking about, Okay, I'm going to play these drums to get a scholarship so I don't have to pay for school, so that I don't have student loans, so by the time I'm 20, 30, I can really do what I want. Yeah. That was I wasn't thinking actively of that. I was considerate of that possibility of how this could impact me years from now because I knew my mom was paying student loans for my master's degree well into almost my teens, right? So, so me being aware and me being observant, right? I can't afford a lot, but I can pay attention. I can notice what I even, I can notice what I notice. And I'm talking about beyond a surface level of paying attention and identifying where, uh, you know, what what reality is and understanding how to utilize that or consider that in how I make decisions. Um, but but yeah, that, that, that's, that's kind of what, where I am as it relates to utilizing my creativity and just kind of, once again, paying attention to what I'm paying attention to. So you just said paying attention to what you're paying attention to. Is that as far as like knowing your gift of what God gave you? I think, yeah, I I think, yes, I I, I think that, you know, and I I take it from a now my mindset. I I didn't realize my mindset was such years ago. But right now, as just as I identify the God given gift or the God given ability, I recognize the God-given reality. This is my parents. This is my parents' parents. These are my aunts. These are my uncles. These are my cousins. So being connected with people who are around me who have an unseen um, connection from genetics, right? I didn't tell you that my grandmother, who was born in 1914, was a burlesque dancer, essentially was a performer, right? And I mean, for all intents and purposes, my grandma could have been Cardi B, (laughs) <laughs> in, the late, in, the, in the late 20s you know what i'm saying uh but what i'm saying understanding that one of my grandparents my grandmother was a performer from that standpoint but also seeing the connection of my grandfather being a minister if we really deconstruct that in performance there's often a stage or a platform and an audience okay right so me having that in my dna and really developing that or even i'll be honest asking questions uh, questions are the framework questions are the activity that build framework around what we want to understand better right so asking my grandmother about this and watching my grandfather and paying attention to how he performs and how he does this and seeing what what happens from that right but if i bring that back more performance is about making decisions so if i bring it back to my real life it's centered around making decisions so as much as I did have confidence in those moments, I had more courage and a willingness to make decisions because I know that decisions make results. Mm-hmm. Whether so, it's my decision or whether it's someone else's decision. So so walk us back through your story. So you first learned about your creativity outside of football through church when you first picked up those drums. So now you're playing drums for the church. What happens next? It works. I start to I start to progress. The people of the church start to notice. In fact, sometimes there were one, there were moments where there was another drummer who had been the one who missed. It was like, okay, Derek is pretty good. This guy's already been he's been there. How do we make this work? So I had to be a little more team centric, uh, and we would share Sundays or share songs. Uh, but I was also playing in the, in the band, so there there were moments where. I would progress as far as my skill set tremendously, right? And, and I also had, I would like to say I had, there was, I had, I understood how to be sociable and had social equity with the people. So I knew how to perform and put on a show. So I would incorporate that and in not just doing the skill, but also uh, performing the skill, right? Um, and so being in a band in high school as well, it put me in front of people, pretty popular band, uh, high school band, David W. Carter High School here in Oak Cliff, Texas. The band was known, the band and the football team were like equally known, right? So I had an opportunity. Huge, to I know in Texas, you guys are like a big football state. It's big football. It's also a big band. I mean, it's, it's a band situation too, you know, because we were playing not just like core style music. We were doing show style. So our, our, we mimic Southern. So if you've ever seen a Southern University marching band or even just a show style marching band, that's what we did. So I'm out front 
you know, the band has on red, I have on white. I've got on a big hat, they've got on a smaller hat. There was always some separation in what I did because uh, how I was able to lead myself and the reflection of my decisions was 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 felt upon other people who, who can make decisions about putting me in position. So, you know, from a standpoint of being drum major, it was even less about music and more about the show and understanding how to perform. And I mean, I would dance and I would do the back then. I would do, I was, I was doing all of that. And that afforded me the attention from that, afforded me the opportunity to audition for the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. My junior year, I accepted the scholarship. I knew, I knew where I was going to college before my senior year. Wow. Bro, my That's huge. That's huge. Wow. So I have a quick question. So how was it moving towards your first producing, um, I say gig, but a producer project? Right. Well, my, so my first music producer project came in college. I was working with a guy. He's actually got a play on Broadway right now. Um, I can't think of the name of it. His name is Steve Rodnax. Uh, and we were roommates. And I've, I've always, I could always play. I always had ideas about music. I just never had access to the equipment. And okay. so uh, back in 2004, maybe 2005, I don't know if y'all remember Napster and LimeWire and ShareBear and all those yes. guys, right? I was yes. able to get access to the software. Once again, I couldn't afford a lot, but I could pay attention. I knew where to get resources from. And that's another thing about working, being a producer, being an entrepreneur, or just being honestly a, a person, how resourceful are you? Um, and so I had ideas about a song. I would talk to my friend. He was a rapper. He was an artist. He was actually about one of the theater excuse me, my, my roommate was actually one of the theater professors on campus. So I'm roommates, me, my, my, my one of the, my, he's my partner, uh, he's a professor. And then his cousin, we were all in the room. So we will, we will be up, he'd be working on plays and scripts and writing so he could write. He understood music and would go to the studio. I had never been to the studio. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, man, I'm gonna see, how, I'm, 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 I'm adjacent to what Steve is doing. I'm connected to where someone is writing and performing and understands music and hip hop. He's going to the studio. Yo, let me just roll with you. So I was able to see, oh, here's how music production works. Oh, here's what going to the studio was. At first, I was just a performer of music and a consumer of music. Now, becoming a producer was something new because I understood how to utilize technology um, and even having access to the internet. Um, I, I made a song and I made a beat. And I, my first samples, you know, I've not ever told this like this. But the first samples that I pulled were from Explosive, from Dr. Dre. I, 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 I'm trying uh, to think of, how did that song go? I'm trying to remember uh, the song. Explosive. Right? Hey, that's right. That's so so song. it had a lot of open drums in there. Now, yeah. now, now, let me go back, though, right? I learned about Adobe Audition because I studied broadcast journalism. I was one of the first people who had a radio show, right? Mm. So all of these things kind of, they grow, they evolve. So me being in the band helped me to get to college, get to a space where I can perform consistently, still be a part of a group and, and still develop who I am. From there, I changed my major from marketing to broadcast journalism, which gave me the chance to understand how to produce audio and video. So from that standpoint, because I can talk, I know how to be sociable. And I used to get in trouble for talking, uh, which talking is an art form. It's a creative expression. Um, I was able to learn how to be in front of the camera and use my voice. So now my voice, even though I'm not singing per se, I understood how to use my voice. But then I would have to edit my voice in Adobe Audition, which helped me understand, well, if I can edit my voice and create a sample, I could take music and make a sample and pull that out and make music. And that's that's mm-hmm. literally where all of that kind of uh, kind of grew together and just put me on the pathway of just I mean I've been doing the same thing since a freshman in high school. I didn't even tell you I do graphic design. I didn't tell you I started doing graphic design. You are all like, over the place. Wait, wait, wait. You did football, you did music, you dabble in graphic design. What else do you do? Theater, voiceover. Oh, yeah. <laughs> listen, well, this is what I'm saying my greatest resource is my ability to make decisions based on what I understand. 
if I can't do anything, I can do something. Mm-hmm. Even when I can't do anything, there's something I can do. And that's me so, understanding. Go ahead. So, so, so what would you say your main forte is? Your this main is Nyron. This is Nyron. <laughs> He's going to ask me a thousand questions. <laughs> no, no. Listen, I, once again, I, said, I said questions are the gateway to understanding. Right. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on, boss. My <laughs> my um my forte is centered around problem solving. Right? Through the options that I have and I see before me. Right? So so mm-hmm. so so my ability to think, my ability to observe first helps me get insight and 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 context to what I may need to solve a problem uh, what problem I might need to solve. That's mm. my forte. So whether it's and so once again, when I mentioned playing drums, I solved a problem. Right? There was no one there. I stepped in, did it. When I started doing music, I solved a problem or I added some I I, I solved an equation. My my friend was getting producers and working with producers. I'm saying, yo, we work together. I know you. Let me do give me a chance. Not even just give me a chance. I'd like to offer this or share this with you. It solved the problem. Yo, man, if I have anything else, I've got ideas. Mm. If you, I've got ideas. So I know how to contribute something really impactful really quickly. And that leads to where other opportunities come in. That leads to transactional or exchanges of dollars and goods. And, and sometimes I'll say notoriety or just um, social, social equity. Mm. So I so what is my forte? I I don't know. You know what do I do the most of right now? I produce uh, video. I produce digital content, and I have to put it from a, from a standpoint of digital content. You like YouTube? Huh? Well, we'll say YouTube. YouTube is a platform, but I produce video, I, and so I produce video. I produce music, which is audio, and I do visual art. So those are the three. So I'm, I'm really I'm multidisciplinary. Um, what is visual art again? Say it again. Visual art is like graphic design. I paint. Um, uh, even now I'm, I've got some D- NFTs that I'm working through that I'm about to release. Maybe uh, you know, mid next year. Um, that that's that's what visual art is. So, like I said, anything that you see, I can create. Anything that you hear, I can create. Anything that uh that you see, as far as like videos and visuals, I can create it, and I've done it at every single level even for my music production i came back so i started doing more music production when i was in arkansas uh working with my with my theater friend uh and we were even producing plays and, and theater and all kind of stuff mm-hmm. and i came back to dallas one of the first things i did i asked for a motif es a yamaha motif es6 that's the production keyboard that little john was using at the time this is in 2006 Okay. I got I got that. I start in my mind, if these are the industry standards and the levels and this is what Lil John is doing, I need the same thing. Mm. And I would listen to music so much. It's the same way I learned design. I would listen to so much music and deconstruct the arrangements once again, going back to playing drums and understanding what I said earlier, rudiments. It's the foundation of rhythm. So when Just did like you start? The, when did you start monetizing? So, so you got, so you got the little John machine. I, I, I don't know what to call it. Call it's it a key, it was John. a keyboard. It's a keyboard. Uh, yes. So you got the little John keyboard. Yeah, yeah. You're out of college now. You at this point you you learned how to produce music, right? Okay. So when did you start to say, okay, I can use this to talk. I could use the talents that I've accrued over this time period to start monetizing um, my abilities? When did, when did you start monetizing your abilities? Well, my abilities were monetized in the ninth grade when I was getting played to play the drums, mm. right? So I've, I've never not made money with my creative ability, whether even when it was graphic design. And so what I, what I would do is I would get to a certain level and say, okay, not that I reached a, a mark or a cap, but I need to make some adjustments because what happened at a certain point is that everybody became a producer because the barrier of entry for 
having access to Fruity Loops was different than me, my dad spending three two thousand dollars on a keyboard. Mm-hmm. When you can just sample sounds and pull sounds from Napster, or ShareBear, LimeWire, yeah, or sound packs. So now, the, the, everybody started doing it. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, I've got to shift and do something else. Uh, from that standpoint, like I said, I came back to Dallas. I was producing. I was in the studio. I started engineering. I started mixing people's. I started uh, people's sessions, vocal sessions. Uh, I start. I would write. I've I've even recorded and demoed songs. And a lot of that was learned through my friend Steve Broadnax back in college as as a theater professor so even when you look at theater i learned how to do lighting design i learned how to do performance he, he's one of the people who gave me the foundational understanding of what performative arts is friend of mine johnny jones who's it's interesting both of those guys are professors now but they were my close circle of people who who gave me insight into their art form and i can mm-hmm. apply the principles that i understood to what i know to do and so making money was was i don't want to say it was simple i don't it wasn't easy but i will say that it was simple because i've been often able to find a need that someone else has and offer to them immediately it makes sense it's like you made a blueprint for yourself in a way yeah there's a there's a foundational approach that i have with everything i do and man when i tell you it not just that it works but when I talk to you about the numbers one through 10 is every single number that you'll ever need. My, the 20, 25 rudiments that exist are the basic rudiments that you need to have rhythm. Mm. So whether I'm applying that rhythm to a snare drum or a keyboard or a drum set, the principal understanding exists of how to utilize this understanding. Okay. Got it. Got it. So for for our audience here, let's say they don't know their creativity. They don't know their God-given gift that they have. Explain to them how can they find it? I think one one of the best things you could do to really understand, man, I'm going to take it somewhere else. I'm sorry. The God-given gift is waking up, right? What? <laughs> the God-given gift is waking up. Everything else that happens is based on decisions and understanding. I see. I see. Right? Oh, so, oh, so, 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 right, if I'm looking for this God-given gift, I've externalized what the possibilities to be only, that the, that the possibilities are only centered around results not within. So me waking up is my gift. Me seeing the opportunity to do something or learn something or understand something better is where we take it to another level, right? And so now I'm, I went far left. Now let's bring it back, right? <laughs> understanding, understanding what you do really well and most consistently, I think, is the first thing we can do. Sometimes we're so focused we don't have an opportunity to learn about ourselves or pay attention to anything else because we're not in a position to be able to do that. So if you look at what you do most consistently, that should be the first re- revelation of where God given gifts are, because there's something that's generating and creating results that are helping you live life better. Mm. And not, not that your gifts are sitting around work. What I'm saying is that when you have a certain, listen, being broke, and being creative is hard. Facts. You think so? Because there are a lot of creatives that are broke. Yeah. Facts. It's hard. And what I'm saying is that it's hard because there's a certain level where you can't get to see where your other opportunities are, or other creative possibilities exist because you're 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 underwater, right? Like you you you're just not in the space to be able to be to take care of yourself. Yeah. Which I think I think is I don't want to say that's a, that's a challenge, but I, I but I do know there's a challenge, and that's sometimes what that internal struggle is. It's like I want to follow passion, I want to follow this 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 energy and this creativity. That sounds cool, but not when you're broke. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's 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 difficult, you know. Um, there is a certain appreciation and value for 
the romantic aspect of creativity and art. I just have not been able to, I've been afforded that opportunity to that degree, right? Because at the same time, I'm the same guy who has turned down projects when it was centered around me making money and it just didn't, it just didn't align with my, who I was and what I wanted to do. But once again, that's, that's, you're able to be in that space when you have a certain understanding of what your reality is. Because there's still sometimes jobs or, or projects that I like, man, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do, I would prefer, my preference is not to do this. And understanding what I want, what I ultimately prefer, what my super objective is, this helps me get there. And so there's a willingness to pick up some cardboard, the, the hangers from the car, the, the cardboard from the hangers and play on the drums. That's a, that's a, that's a broke approach. That's a low level no dollars, no access to resources approach to okay, executing an I idea. Mm-hmm. Because so you got to start where you are. No, because initially when you started speaking, I thought you said it's hard to be creative and broke, uh, meaning that if you're creative, there's so many different ways to make money that you'll never really be broke. You know what I mean? Uh, okay. And which, which goes back to more of a mindset. It's a, it, being broke is, is having less money. Being poor is passing on opportunities repeatedly. Poor is about a mindset. And that's why I said the mindset is first is that the gift is when you wake up and have life because now there's a new opportunity to do something, to do something, period. And so based on what your understanding is, because I also think innovation comes from parameters. Innovation comes from sometimes not having all the most ideal resources that you need. And so at every point, just as an example, look at Kanye West. Kanye's first album is full of samples. He sampled drums and music from everybody, right? But when you look at, listen to late register, he sampled strings, right? In his first album, you could hear how they were sampled. His second album, late registration, he had had different resources. He had full orchestras and, and string quartets and sets, excuse me, in the studio playing in person. It doesn't, his approach didn't change. The resources and opportunities changed because he maxed out what he had already. And so that's what I'm think, saying. Do you think having a lack of money is almost a necessity when starting out as a creative because it sort of activates your innovativeness? It activates your ability to pull from resources you never really thought you would have had otherwise? I think there are times when having less money makes you creates a situation where you have to be more innovative but i don't want to rely on the broke story i don't want to rely on having no dollar recesses or resources when i can utilize my mindset and approach to say okay what's in front of me now because the next level of what i do and have learned to do i'll say is uh it's something i've got on my i've got online the best idea is the one you can finish today so with that mindset, there's an urgency to finish something right now. What I also have learned is that what I think is finished, what I think is not finished, someone else might be in a space to see that it's finished or beneficial to another capacity for them, right? So that idea of an unfinished song to me is not finished and I still got to work on it. But if I say, I've got to, I got to finish this now, put it in a space where somebody can hear it or see it or consume it some time away. One, they can consume it. That's a transaction. The other thing is that when they see it or consume it, they can see how it can be utilized in another space. Mm-hmm. And so now my art or my creativity is centered around what I can finish. I'll often say even some of my, my business coaching classes. If someone said, I'll give you oh, all the just money. Gonna, just gonna, yes. well, that you also do <laughs> oh, no, I remember, let him finish. Let him finish. When I also teach like my chef stuff and like when I do my drum set, I, no, what right. you do? Is there like a full <laughs> list that I can get of all the things that you do? Listen, man, when 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 you uh, when there's a certain experience that people have when they work with you. There's something about real work that works, period, yeah. no matter what. And as much as faith is a necessity, every time there's been a reference of faith, there's also been some evidence. So when I say the best idea is something that's on the full spectrum, 
faith is something you can't see ideas you don't see until they're made evident so every time there's faith there has to be some effort to make this evident so what are we doing to make our ideas happen now whether it's business success or playing a particular rudiment or playing a particular drum or doing this i still have to make a decision i got to, uh, i want to go back to when you said broke right let's 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 go back to when let's say if someone wants to use their creativity to uh get revenue to get you know six streams of revenue mm -hmm. yeah but their job is delaying them because they need to put food on the table and and the, when what I, my, my response to that is that your job would never delay you your job is not going to take any take opportunities to do work are always are always existing they are always around what are you what what bigger problem are you solving where you are to create an opportunity for where you want to be right creativity just doesn't live and i i don't want to oversimplify it but like creativity is literally making a decision and watching the results that's life right so our my decision to turn on uh my computer and connect with y'all create this opportunity to connect with y'all that's going to unravel other possibilities and other opportunities that we don't even know there's some that we don't even know exist yet and there are some that will that will exist based on what we discover as we continue to pay attention and so there's no there's not ever a reason where you can't be creative you may not be able to be creative the way you want to be you may not be able to be creative in the way you prefer to be but every time we we exist there's an opportunity to make a decision meaning there's an opportunity to be creative it's just applying that creativity to where the opportunity is if i want to paint but i don't have a canvas and paint what what decisions can i make today to make that happen and available for tomorrow and it could be working this job for right now but it's, it's having an idea having a plan having a, a direction and moving with that and deciding in that space so so what so do you have a nine to five right now i can i call them now i call them priority clients, uh, priority I, clients. I have some priority clients I, I have to look at it like that you know what, what i didn't share with you is that I, I didn't necessarily have a desire to be an entrepreneur when i graduated from college nobody would hire me i had all the right internships i had all i was on the dean's list i did all the right things i was i started the national association of black journalists chapter at my college i did all the right everything everyone told me to do i did and it didn't work what mm -hmm. meaning i didn't get the results that i expected based on the decisions that i made i think that's a that's a pretty typical millennial problem uh, I, I, the value of the college degree now is nowhere near what it was 20, 30 years ago. So right. the idea of coming out of college, getting a four-year degree, um, you know, being able to sustain yourself or, or move out or own property with just a degree is kind of a fruitless endeavor at this point. Yeah, it's, it's a farce, you know. And I'm I've, I've been I was at a space where I was right between. I knew I didn't want, I didn't want to go to college. I'll be honest, I didn't want to. I also knew I didn't want to pay for it. And, and what mm -hmm. I'm saying, I mean, as it relates to being broke, there are certain decisions that we're paying for because of what we did three months ago, three years ago, three decades ago. And so, having taking responsibility for that doesn't say doesn't put me in the mind to say Man, i can't do this because i don't have this it's saying okay i made a decision at some point that led to where i am now and my just owning that creates a certain level of power or courage and confidence to know that i own my decisions i own my future no one else is responsible for that so what so what do you do for your priority clients right now what what, what, what do you do yeah. for them one of the main things I do is sit around video digital content production uh, okay. and, and really moving, you know, really is more executive producing, if we're honest. 
Um, I am doing, I'm, I'm handling finances, I'm handling budgets, I'm hand, handling hiring talent, I'm writing creative briefs, I am uh, handling like accommodations, I've got a, an assistant for the most part, like I've, I've, I'm, I'm an executive producer, you know, uh, I'm even on site directing. Uh, for how do you projects. balance, and how do you balance that huge workload with the multitude of other things that you bring to the table. So like 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 with your creativity and what were you now? You you, you play the drugs, <laughs> your teacher, so you hold a business think. seminar. Oh, you know? I don't want to yeah. add on to that too. When we, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I don't have I don't have time. And real quick, I don't have time. Um and I don't look for balance because balance happens when the balance being when something is balancing. The moment it stops is when you identify whether it's in balance or not. I don't have time to stop um, the, I, because I'm living, because I'm alive. So I look for alignment. That helps me. I, I will confess and admit I'm in a space where this is probably one of the hardest things I've done in 15 years. Okay. Literally, this is this is this is hard, uh, and and like it's stressful. Like I'm kind of not doing the best with my health because of the amount of, and not just stress, but just the amount of intensity that I have with this. Uh, but it's also a space where I get to utilize every aspect of what I know to mm. make something happen. And that's still you get much sleep? I do get sleep. I do get sleep. It's just, I call it decision fatigue. I make so yeah. many you Visions. have interesting words, my friend. <laughs> interesting <laughs> words for the food you call life. Well, I mean, do you under, you do understand what I mean? And I'm not trying. Like, I'm not. So let me say this: I'm not trying to I have like words. Bro. Like, I just I have deconstructed words and understandings and situations to sit to create the life that I want. That's ultimately the the most creative space we can be is in the life that we that we want and having the idea for that and making it happen. So, so what did you call sleep? I, I call it a sleep. I get sleep. No, 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 I said, no you I, said I, something I, you said something else. You called it uh fatigue. Decision fatigue. Decision fatigue. Decision I get decision, decision fatigue. fatigue. <laughs> like there's there's a point when I, there there's sometimes I feel like there's a point when you have so many decisions that you've made before you start to do things that don't make sense. When you get tired, like being like so when we talk about strengths understanding your best work hours like i know my best workout and like and being aware of that like diamond when 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 are your best hours to work uh for me it's my best your best work your best self my best self like yeah, what yeah. like a, a specific time yeah or... like what what time frame and for all of y'all tc Naira, like when is your when do you work and uh, when are you the most productive I say from 9 a.m. to about noon, those three hours are when I'm at my back. Since I work nights, I would say like the evening. Yeah, like yeah. What, what, give me a time frame. So let's say like 9, no, no, like 6, e, 6 p.m. to like, I'm going to shoot a shot, like 2 a.m. Something two, like gotcha. that. Gotcha, 6 to 2. My, mine is like 5 a.m. to like... 8 p.m. I'm like, 50, I'm what? Oh, come I'm, on, you're I'm lying. So now. Listen, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm so serious. What I'm so hold on, hold on. Oh, I, I don't, I, I everything. I'm so <laughs> serious. So, within that time frame, if you had to identify <laughs> three to four hours, when are you the when are you super like at your at your super best? Well, I just oh. gonna give the ridiculous answer. It's every day, it's all day when I wake up before I go to sleep. On oh, end, I'm at my best. <laughs> oh, um, my for for me, I'm gonna say around like one or two o'clock. That's when in, I'm in the afternoon. Yes. Yeah. So 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 now so so when you talk about being aware of your gifts or your strengths, mm -hmm. understanding where you make the best decisions. Mm -hmm. And the time frame you make the best decisions puts you in a space to take care of that at that point, because you know that these other moments may not give you the best results that you need and that you want. Mm -hmm. And so that becomes part of what I do. Like I know my peak time, my peak times are between 5 a.m. to like 7.30. A.m. A.m. 5 a.m. Okay. 
I thought you were about to give a diamond cash no, 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 answer. I'm, I'm not, 5 a.m. to 7 30 p.m. Hey, hey, I'm 15 hours, baby. I'm 15 hours. <laughs> and I'm, 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 I'm gonna tell built you, like this. I'm going to tell you, you're not built like that. Your body that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and so, so mean, when, even hey. when about balance, that, that's a real thing is that your body will start to break down. And I had to really hone in because, like, there's a certain level of nature where you could just you just go all day. Like, you just you, you run it up. That's not sustainable. I, and I'm just as a from black man to black man, it's not sustainable. As a nearly 40 year old guy, that's not it's not sustainable, dog. Like, and that's why I'm saying so that you don't, you know, I, I even tell guys like as it relates to relationships, don't get with a woman who wants a hard working man. So wait, wait, you wait, you, you give relationship advice too. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I talk. I, I, talk. I, I talk. So so things that you value, I talk about. Is there if you value your relationships and women and dating and being married, I'm saying recommending just based on what I've observed, don't be with someone who wants you to work hard because the fallacy is that working hard gets you better results. No, working hard gets you more work. You don't want more work. You want to be able to be so laser focused and pinpoint and understand where you're the most productive. Being productive is not equal to amount of work that you put in. It mm -hmm. is aligned to your effort and your decision, but where, but so when you look back and reflect back to where your best decision making, where your best times for making decisions are, you have to look at that. And you have to, I think it's important that you sit around yourself. So for me, I've identified Five to about seven thirty is my peak time where I do well. I will literally take a nap for an hour, and my next peak time is between eleven and two. So you have two multiple peak times. Okay. Okay. I, there okay. are multiple moments when I perform my best. So now, if I create this like three I to four see. hour block of okay. where I'm most effective, I can use that other time to do mundane things or just do do and make decisions that don't require a deep level of thinking. Mm, I so, hear it. Uh, I, okay, now, okay, now I understand what you're saying. I'm, I'm thinking like you're, you're doing like a work schedule, right? But yeah, no, he just I'm, wanted to know when you performed yeah, at your best. Uh, and you yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no. Now I understand what you're saying. I didn't understand concept. what you were saying before. Now I do. Yeah, so you saw um, your cell battery not too long ago. <laughs> Right. Yeah, you, you made it seem like you were just Superman and you I mean as much as I'm sure you want to be. All day, not. every day, seven eleven hours. Yeah. And that, that's that's just not realistic, man. You know, and that, that's the other part of being honest and being a creative and just knowing you can't go twenty four hours. Like I, I used to spend hours and hours in the studio and the whole idea of grind culture and staying up late and burning the midnight oil. That sounds cool. It's not effective. It's not sustainable. It's not effective because it's not sustainable. Like you do better taking a nap, realizing that, man, I'm at the end of my day. Like, think about it. If you had a certain amount of certain amount of decisions that have that, that you start with, a bank of decisions that you start with, at the end of the day, are those are you gonna have that many, are you gonna have more decisions at the end of the day or the beginning of the day of, in your bank? <laughs> At the beginning the, of the day, you're gonna have more. At the beginning, yes. so go ahead, let you go to sleep, let your body rejuvenate, let your body just reset, and wake up, and be able to make more intelligent decisions. And that's ultimately what we're talking about. Yeah. It's possible that you're in a you're not in a job that's not letting you be creative. You've made decisions prior to this moment that have put you in a position where you can't, where that's not an option. Everything is about options. Mm, very true, because you had to listen to your body. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Because what do you say to the? What do you say to the? Like, uh, I don't, I don't want to go off topic here, but I mean, I've encountered a lot of people that are older than us um, that say, you know, you guys are all stuck. You don't work hard enough. When I was your age, I had two, three jobs, and you only have two jobs, and you know, you should, you know, you should work more. You should work harder, and it's. It, what do you say to the people that don't understand the value of separating, <laughs> of separating some some quiet time and peace time with the amount of work that you do? I, I think having quiet time and having peace time is super important. You have to be able to afford it, meaning you have to put yourself in a position or make decisions to where that is an option. Sometimes, 
there are moments where I do have to stay up late. There are sometimes moments where I do have to work with more work or effort than I prefer to. I just, tr my, my objective is to make that not the norm. The other thing mm -hmm. is that for those older people who would say work, 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 they didn't have the option to understand compounded interest. And co I call it even compound decision making, making a choice today that impacts three to five well, things later new on. Friends and new I don't friends. Know <laughs> that, that I'm not aware of yet, right? So, 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 Diamond, you're on my, you're, you're, I made a decision with two other young ladies and we do a Monday morning um, yes. leaders prioritizing God, right? My decision to do that was centered around me being disciplined and saying, this is something I've got to commit to every week and something, create something where people look forward to it. What you also don't know, you may not know, is that I'm working on a book. So I know that this becomes so writer. So now you're a writer too. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a multidisciplinary creative. Let's go. I love it. I sincerely love it. It's just that it's just like Let's you just go. drop it so casually, like it's not a big deal. I, it's, it's <laughs> amazing. And I haven't even talked to y'all about like my 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 objective to like create like to really 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 step into fashion. Right, because what I what I've also learned to do is the thing the spaces where I want to go, I create opportunities for other people to do that so that I can collaborate. So when I create a culture a, a website a platform called Culture Market where I've been doing, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> all right, sorry. Uh, when I do when I have created when I want to get into fashion but don't necessarily prefer to go to fashion school or anything like that. I create a platform where I do t-shirt creation and fulfillment. So from the business standpoint, if you got a restaurant, a logo, or you do sales, anything, you can send me your logo. I can upload it to my platform and, and, and you can literally order your work, attire, and apparel. That generates the dollars that I need to pay for the platform that allows me the opportunity and the option to create t-shirts and, and use creativity from that standpoint to sell these ideas that I have or to put other people in position to generate opportunity and make money. And so that's what we're talking about. There's a level of consideration for business as much as there is creativity. And so when I've got, even on some of my listening, I'll share with you, Diamond, it's called The Lab, Life Art Business. There's a certain value from a creative standpoint to understand art better. But every creative I know has the opportunity, really has a development space to learn more about business and understand business better. Right. But also those people who do know business and understand business, I create a space for them to better understand art better so that they're cre there's an intersection. Because what happens is business will say, I just need this result. The artist is saying, I need these resources. The business person is saying, I don't care what you need. And then the artist is not making the best product that the business person needs to sell for the person who's consuming it. And so when you think about it from a standpoint of whether it's toilet paper or selling music or, 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 or creating the toilet paper experience or the soap experience, the soap related, the, the experience related to soap is the same approach that's used to create a music product, understanding who the audience is, understanding what opportunities and resources you have and what platform do you have to distribute it? Once again, the same approach. I've got, a, I've got this ES, uh, six there's 56 keys those are 56 options that i have as i create this song mm -hmm. because i can sample i can take other sounds apply them to there from one key or one note and then apply that one note to become 56 options because i can change the key or of that i can change the tone of that based on those options the same way as if i'm in business selling t-shirts cool i'm going to connect with spotify I'm gonna connect with a wholesaler and a vendor who does automatic fulfillment where they just, I just upload the artwork, put it on the digital representations of what it is, send it to a customer, they order it and it's fulfilled and shipped to them. Those are still the same, I'm doing the same thing, looking at my options, I'm creating my options, I'm creating opportunity, I'm reviewing my options, I'm applying it and I'm making it available for somebody to consume. Whether it's on Spotify with music, or whether it's on a t-shirt platform called Culture Market, where people can buy their ideas from a t-shirt. So, so I'm so curious, uh, with all these things on your plate, walk me through a normal day-to-day -day for you. 
All right. Like so, it's, a, it's a Thursday. What are you doing on a Thursday? It depends on what happens. I just came from a conference. I was a moderator and a speaker at a conference this past Thursday. Um, I was also handling the fulfilling edit request for this international project. Oh, well, not international project for this national project for um, for this organization. I also had conversations about doing some producing. Dang, I had a meeting about producing a. Um, uh, it's a partnership with with, with Pandora. Actually, well, I'm not supposed to say that. It's a part. It's working on a, uh, a fashion show a deal, a and deal. show. Yeah. A okay. Deal, right. Yeah. And so sitting, sitting around production. So my responsibility for one part of it is from a creative standpoint. I had to select the venue uh, and think about like what production we want to have and what we do. I'm like I'm still working with another editor to send them. Literally, I've got it. When I get off of here, I got to go copy probably three terabytes worth of video that we shot over two days. I got to create two separate jump drives and send to one editor to send, send got to send it to Vegas and send it to Chicago. So, right. So what I'm saying is my approach is, is to, is, is the, the eliminate, delegate, automate. So when I talk about culture market, that's a level of me creating, but I'm automating aspects of it because I put it in a space where someone else can handle the responsibility of that. Uh, when I, when I delegate, I say, I've got partners and I got people we're working with. Okay, team, we've got to get to this objective. I need you to do this. I need you to do this. And we'll come, and I'll do this. And we're going to continue to grow and move from there. And the last thing I do is eliminate. There are so many things I don't do because I don't have the space, the time, or the capacity to do it really well. And so, so those are the three approaches that I utilize to understand how and what to prioritize in the moment. Literally, like, I, so it's about prioritization for me. Yeah. It's, it's a, and so when I talk about priority clients, there are some things I can't do for myself that I prefer to because I've got a commitment that I made, an agreement that I made with this client where they're, they're priority. So I've got, I have to do these things. It's got to happen and there's, there's no other option. So, so my follow-up question is, with all of these different hats that you're wearing, how do you know when to walk away from some projects? Or how do you know as a creative when some things just aren't for you? How do you handle like failure? Um, that is a really important question. The way, and one, I'm still learning it, right? Because of my ambition, I do get excited. I sometimes get over water and overwhelmed with projects that I'm working on, mm -hmm. right? So, so it happens. When I do that, I literally, there was a point when I had to call, and this guy's a friend, he's a fashion designer. And I was like, man, listen, I want to produce this show so bad. I literally don't have the capacity to prioritize it the way I want to right now. When there's something that I see or an idea I have, I'll share it with you. I may not be able to commit to make it happen, but I will definitely share the idea that I have with you. And if you find value in it, you know, I'll walk, I'll, I'll, I'll do what I can when I can. And I say this, I say this, I'm learning to say this to people. When I can, I will. When I can't, I won't. Okay. And that allows me the personal grace to say, hey man, you can't do this this way. And I make sure to communicate that. That's the other part is they're really communicating. Listen, you know, like I said, I told RJ, I, I want to do this. I just cannot prioritize it the way I prefer to right now because of what I've, because of my responsibility. So that's been one thing that I've done to help that. There have been moments where I crash and I literally have caused, I don't say catastrophes, but I've caused other people's projects not to be finished because I just got bottlenecked. I got, I, I overcommitted. And that's mm. something that happens sometimes out of simply feeling a void because sometimes the vo there, there comes a point when money is not, it's not about money. Mm -hmm. There comes a point when you're doing this to feed or fulfill something else that has nothing to do with anything productive. It may center around your emotions. It may mm. center around a relationship or a void or grief or uh, so many things. Because at some point, it's not about the money. But when you get to a particular level, it's not even, it's not about the money. The money is a result of decisions made. 
Mm. Gotcha. And, and and so not just dealing with that. So so but, so for example, with that project that failed, where like you had to let go of a project that you really wanted to do. Emotionally, how did you handle that? Um, I I, just, I accepted all the emotions and still centered my value and worth on making the decisions. I felt bad. I felt horrible. I felt like I lied. I felt like I misled. I misguided. I felt responsible. Those are my feelings. I can express those, I can have those. That does not mean that I have to make decisions to improve the feeling of what that is, right? Um, my, my, my emotions are mine. I don't have to, it, I will tell you this, ask yourself, the last time you made an emotional based decision, how did it work out? I had a game winner. But that's like basketball, you know what I mean? No, 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 hold on, hold on. Emotional based or intuition? No, it was emotional based. Uh, you know, with sports it's a little different. You know, I play basketball on the weekends all the time. This person was talking a whole lot of mess, and you know, it was point game. I had the guy on my back. I hit a fadeaway in his face, and it felt real good. But I knew it was my emotion that drove me to take that shot in the first place. Hold on. Hold on. So, so now, glad you said that. Your emotion drove you to to do what? To what to do what to the shot to take the shot to take the shot you made a decision based on what your awareness was based on your surroundings based on how you had the person positioned at that point you made the decision to take the shot and you made it that literally was not that was not based on emotion you utilized your emotions which is what creativity is having an emotion having a sensation or a feeling is the most human experience that exists Making the decision to do something that's productive and beneficial for you and the people around you is ultimately what you have the opportunity to decide every single moment. That's what you did. Mm. So okay. some of it is, is reframing what emotions are and reframing what decision opportunity is. I'm so, trying. I'm trying to so, understand you. I'm so, so if you took that shot because you saw that was a good shot to take. Yeah, but it, it it was I like it felt really good to take it, and I wanted to make it in front of this guy because he was the one talking the wildest amount of shit. So yes. it, I, that, that, I, yes, that still wasn't an emotional. But you used logic because if you didn't, if you didn't you have a it. shot, you would have done something different. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. I mean, so you like, mean? don't, don't listen, don't reward your good decisions to say that it was based on a bad emotion. Mm -hmm. You missed mm -hmm. the opportunity to reward yourself for making a, sol a sound decision. It worked. Did it work? Yeah, we won. That is a, that's a sound decision. Mm. Okay. You, it's you, had, you had emotion, you utilized emotion, but you made, now if you, if you made, if you took a bad shot, and you knew that it was a bad shot, that's the emotional based decision making. You took that shot because you saw that it was a good shot. You made the decision to do that. That's variably different than you just throwing something up just to get, you know, just just to just to take this. Like But I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if I wasn't fired up inside from what this guy was saying throughout the game. Would I even have had the vision of taking that shot? And the answer is probably no. Probably would have probably passed no. it off. You, you you quite possibly would have. And that those are the moments when you really step into who you are and step into the moment, right? And utilize everything around you the same way as a creative does. You you utilize everything. So what someone intended for harm, you utilize it as a means of driving your inspiration to make a decision based on what you understood. Yes. Yeah. You use what you have. You utilize, not just use, you utilize it. You you took this 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 energy because because Max, you were you were mad, you were frustrated. There are probably some other things that you there were some other options that you considered. There are some other options that you knew were possible that you didn't take because 
it it ultimately wouldn't get you where you want to be. You could have punched dude in the, in the throat. That's an option, <laughs> right? That's For true. real, you could have punched him in the throat. You you didn't decide that. Yeah. You 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 didn't true. decide that. Yeah. And so I don't want to say that's an emotional based decision. I do want to say that you utilize your emotions and your environment in a situation to to make the best decision sitting around what you preferred and what you wanted. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Um, we're sort of pressed on time. How, how many minutes I have for you, D? Well, bro, you, you told me to be available. I said, OK, I'm <laughs> Let's here. go. Uh, I, I like that. Let's go. So going back to emotions, because a lot of times people uh, do things out of their emotions and their feelings. Uh, for example, um, I don't feel like going to the gym today, and it's a feeling. I know I have to get my body right, but I don't feel like going. I feel like staying in this couch, and I'm just relaxing. Laziness. So can, can you please talk more about more of this? decisions and our emotions well feelings too yeah yeah well well feelings and emotions are on the same end yes so so are on the same end of the spectrum as ideas yes and opinions right Mm -hmm. on the other end of the spectrum you have have one end you have feelings emotions on the other hand you have decisions and results or outcomes you have reality you have ideas and you have reality just because this is your idea doesn't make this a requirement that it has to be your reality so the variable that changes all that is understanding what result you want or what outcome you prefer so if you want an outcome where you're more healthy or your heart rate is up logically you should make decisions based on what you desire even if we you would take it even if we take it from a spiritual standpoint or biblical standpoint you know god will give you the desires of your heart so if you have this desire in your heart to be in this space to live in this way to have this outcome to be at this weight to make this drawing to make this beat to make this music what decisions can you make based on the moment to get closer to that Yeah, and I, so I, now I, it's not about it's not about I'm tired. It's what did you not do or what opportunity did you pass on previous to the prior to this moment where you're tired now? Because if you're saying you want to be in shape and go to the gym, you should have considered that when you stayed up and worked too late trying to burn the midnight oil, trying to grind. You you've got to prioritize your options. You got to prioritize what you do based on what your desires are and what you want. Mm. 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 Makes sense. Definitely. Right. So now we're going back to you in the basketball analogy. The reason you didn't punch the guy in the throat is because you knew there was another way to get the result that you needed. That was more safe. That was better long term. And that would still give you the feeling or the sensation or the desire that you needed. That makes sense. That makes sense. And, you know, to be quite honest, I'm not a violent person. Punching him in the throat, I don't think, would have been as satisfying as hitting the game winner, you know? <laughs> right. But and, and I've been, definitely been extreme with that. But, but what I'm saying is that, you know, sometimes there are options that we – that that the reason that wasn't an option is because of what you understand about the results of making that type of decision. I can guarantee you Mm. Mm. because it would not put you closer. It would not align you better. I think that's a better way to say it. It won't align you better to what you ultimately want. Yeah. What I wanted to do was shut him up by hitting this shot right in his face. And did it happen? I'm never going to forget it. It felt really right. good. It, felt, right. it always feels good to get a game winner. And, and, and listen, and your ability to be aware and to pay attention is what set you up to be able to do that. What were you focused on? You were focused on the moment. 
You weren't yeah, I felt everything. I knew I felt the ball in my hands. I felt him on my back. I knew which way I was going to turn. I knew the angle of my elbow before I even took the shot. I knew the arc. I knew the position of the hoop in relation to where my body was. Like when when I'm when I'm angry or when I'm upset at something and I'm focused and that turns into like an ultra focus into what I need to do, I become hyper aware of the activity before I make the move. So that's ultimately what we're talking about is being laser focused. Mm-hmm. I've got a, I've got an acronym. I think one way to be focused is is to fast, right? Um, and, and I think we understand what fasting is, right? Is when you, yes. you, you from a from a spiritual standpoint, you sacrifice, you give up. So there's an acronym that I've created for for fast. It's focused actions succeeding together. Focused, focused actions. actions succeeding together. That's a fast. Okay. So you're willing to sac you're willing to sacrifice. You're willing to give up. Um, and so that, well, one second, that's the, that's the, we'll say the professional development way I use fast from a spiritual standpoint or a religious standpoint, we'll say faith-based standpoint. I use fast acronym is faith, action, sacrifice together. You had the faith that this opportunity was going to happen. You had the action and the opportunity and you made the decision to, to, to do what you did. You sacrifice the feelings or the other emotions that you have to be focused on what you need to do. And that's what happened together. And the results are what they are. Mm. Your mm. ability to see, see, so even now, if you, I think that's another important thing to do. Can y'all hear me well? Yes. yes. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. I think the other thing to consider as it relates to decisions in the moment is your reflection to or acknowledgement or, or, or embodiment of the very first time someone told you to pay attention to your elbow position, right? That's about learning skill. How many times have you practiced that? How many times have you practiced and through repetition prepared for that very moment? Mm. Mm. Uh, decades at this point. So now, when you talk about identifying and understanding skills as a creative, where has your effort been? Where have your decisions aligned as it relates to what you want? Well, right? yeah, I, 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 I see what you're saying because there are a couple of ideas that I have ruminating in my brain, like a short story that I just thought of last week that I haven't really started writing on yet. And a couple of business ideas in my head, but, my focus has my, my focus hasn't been on that. It's just like like when an idea pops in my head is like, oh, I got a good idea. I'm just gonna shelve it for now. You know what I mean? And and you know, continue working or doing other things. But it's never really it never really leaves my brain until until I actually do it or at least try to do it. So, so let me add some context to that. Ideas have to happen twice in your mind and in reality. Oftentimes, we believe that the reality has to be the most perfect version, the finished version, the, our idea of what the finished version is. What I want to challenge you to do is to not just shelve it, because even the mindset of saying, I'm going to shelve it, means that I'm just storing this. You need to clear out space in your brain to have more opportunities to be aware and to focus more. Right? So, what I want to challenge you to do is take these ideas and write them down or just and use words to describe them as best you want them to exist. Because I'll tell you, sometimes it's not money that you need. Sometimes it's not time that you need. Sometimes it's about the relationship or you seeing this idea in another space and understanding how to apply the operation of that or apply the understanding of what that idea is to your current environment. So if you got an idea for a short story, go ahead and write the synopsis for it. Go ahead and write the characters out for it. Because I'll tell you, just as a person who's learning more about executive production and executive producing for film and other projects, there's someone who can do the work. So this is when you have to use the, when I talk about eliminate, delegate, automate, you have to delegate sometimes through relationship. It, their delegation comes and shows up because your idea is the solution that someone's problem needs. Mm. So that short story, 
write it. I can't tell you. I've got a concept for a TV show. I have literally written down the, the synopsis. I've written down a description of the first 10 episodes. I've written down the character analysis, the character description, so that if someone says, I've got every single thing that you need to make sure this idea happens, you just have to finish it by tomorrow. Are you, can you do that? Um, the answer is no. yeah. Yes, yes, I can. I can write out the show. I can write out the short story tonight. I'm sure I could. Well, uh, so yeah. So what I'm saying is that are you at that point? If somebody said that came on the line right now. If I said right now, I've got a million dollars to give you everything that you need to make this idea happen. I just need you to tell me about it in the next thirty seconds. Are you prepared to do that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The whole and, and, the whole thing is in my head. I see it. I I know how how it starts from beginning to end. I mean, what I'm saying is. Make that tangible or make that available in another place so that someone else can see it. That's creativity. It's outside of your head. I have one quick thing to add to that. That's similar to Will Smith when he joined Fresh Prince. He didn't know that he's going to be auditioning for Fresh Prince. He went to a party with Quincy Jones, I believe, and Quincy Jones is presenting him the opportunity. It's like, yo, so you have executive producers at NBC here. Yo, we don't buy about to do a show. You ready to audition? He's just like, yo, like you tell me now. He's just like, it's up to you. Right. <laughs> Literally looked at himself in the mirror. He's just like, okay. So I get what you're saying. I get yeah. exactly what you're saying. Yeah, like you, and, and that's about preparation. Now to go back to your basketball situation. You had been preparing for that moment, and you didn't even know that. What I'm saying is you were so focused on making sure that you were at, in the best space that you were, that you weren't worried, worried about absolutely the results. You knew what you wanted, but you weren't so worried about the results or not. Similar scenario with the Will Smith situation. <clears throat> and this is about creativity, understanding creativity and how everything aligns. And I, I think the basis of creativity is centered around words and writing because it's centered around ideas is that Quincy Jones, as a multidisciplinary creative, as a musical genius, who stepped into and became a, a, an executive producer for TV and film, <clears throat> excuse me. he saw, man, this kid can write a hook. This kid can write a verse. This kid can write a song. Listen, bro, if you can write a chorus and a song and a, and a verse and make a song, that's a story. If you could write a rap song, you could write essentially a screenplay, right? If you could rap, write a song, perform the music video, now you're acting. If you could act and write a story, then you could possibly do television. If you could do television based on what I see your raw skills are or your raw gifts are based on your efforts, I see that you can do so much more. And so now you're talking about, you know, a person who has won and been, you know, been commended as one of the best actors, period. Yeah. Right? Yeah. In a yeah. variety, in a from a multidisciplinary approach. I think genetically and ornately, that's a black thing. Mm -hmm. Our blackness and our ability to perform to be creative, to be innovative, yeah. is why we are the biggest exploited community in the world. So true. The yes. base foundation of our ability to create from Eli Whitney to, with the cotton gin to Kanye West and his new shoes where they don't have shoestrings to Oprah Winfrey, to Tyler Perry, to Kevin Hart, to Diamond Cash, to TC, to Nyron. You've got every single thing that you need just because you are here and you wake up. Every other opportunity is available and possible because you are going to make decisions based on what you desire. Mm.
Mm-hmm. So you're also a motivational speaker in addition to writer and producer. I know a lot. You I felt everything you were just saying. Like, Facts. <laughs> and so I wouldn't I wouldn't liken it to motivation. I don't like motivation. I'm gonna go on a rant a little bit. I don't like motivation. It's too <laughs> external. Is outside because if you're waiting on motivation, that means if motivation isn't there, you don't do anything. I prefer inspiration. I prefer instruction because when you don't know what to do, you always do what you know. You've always do. You always do what you've always done have always done. And so when you don't, when you've got inspiration, that's different than motivation. Motivation is, I'm tired. I need to find a reason. I need to create a reason. I need to see something outside of me that exists to drive me to do something that I know I want to do. Inspiration mm. is waking up and knowing that you're responsible and you have the opportunity and you're optimistic about what's possible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't want motivation. I do want to inspire. I, like I do that. want to provide instruction. I think sometimes and I'm kind of ranting in here. I think a lot of times I just said this on a panel. A lot of times, even in church or in certain settings, there's too much uh, 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 inspiration with without enough instruction, right? So, right. Siren, even even the instruction oh, you have boss. about aligning your elbow to the goal to make sure that when you shoot, that's about instruction. So, when you're in a moment where you're inspired for whatever reason by someone's trash talk or by the fact that you just want to show up and win the game and be and do what you do. That's gonna align to the moment that exists for you to hit that shot. Yeah, in terms in terms of the the short story idea that I had, I mean the the creativity came. I don't know. I'm sure all of us are like this, where we just have ideas that just hit us from out of nowhere. Yeah. But I was I was uh, visiting family in Panama, and it was it's the rainy season down there. And, you know, the short story is just tied to water and what water holds and what it could do for people just emotionally. And But, you know, I, I don't think if I wasn't if I wasn't there, I'm, I'm almost positive the idea would not have sparked in the first place, you know? Yeah, I, I, it, it's possible that that would not have happened. And that's why I think that's even in my book It's called Momentum. And uh, it's for momentum, mindset to my uh, mindset to manifestation. And so, because of that moment and the gathering of moments which build momentum, it allows you to be present in that space to 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 utilize that experience, to be inspired by that reality, and have an idea. What I'm mm-hmm. saying is, get it out of here in the fastest way that you can, because even you sharing that, I might be able to share. And so side note, as it relates to creativity, that's why it's important to share it um, and to connect with others and to collaborate and to make sure that even as you're sharing that, there could be, you, you, you may not be able to do the full scale production that you want to do, but what can you do? So when I go back to the idea of Will Smith or even myself as it relates to offering solutions or adding to what someone else has. Quincy Jones saw in Will Smith what he didn't even realize he knew to see. That's why it's important to be in spaces where you can express, where you can share. Because someone might see or hear you talk about that story and that you were in Panama and then learn about your history, learn about your culture, learn about your stories and to hear what ideas you have and how you've been inspired. Mm-hmm. And so what I've also learned is as I step into more of an executive role is that I've got to read it. I can, hearing your ideas is one thing. I've got to see it and be able to communicate what that is with some other people who can contribute. And that's the same thing with you. You cannot be there. Let me rephrase that. There will be a point where you've got to include someone else. Mm. Even if it's for them to just review the idea and to add their perspective, there is mm. always a point where you've got to you have somebody else. Even if you did finish the project, you want people to what? Read it. it. 
see it, consume it, read it. And so what I'm saying is, you know, I I, I used to do um, some coaching with um, the homeless uh, rehab center here. And I was my, 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 my responsibility was to help them represent themselves or present themselves for job opportunities, job interview training and prep and really it's centered around confidence building. And I would often ask them, uh, I would tell them an idea has two steps. How many steps in the idea? Two. Two. Have an idea, make it happen. Yes. That's all. Right? So with that, I would ask them about their idea sometime, and some would say, I want to own a restaurant, but I just need two and a quarter million dollar loan. I said, well, listen, are you ready for that right now? Have you written out your menu? What about the seasonal changes and the shifts that you're going to do for your menu? Do you know what color seats you want? Do you know what color tablecloth you want? Do you want an open kitchen format? Do you want uh, delivery only? What like? If you can't answer these questions, if I'm asking you questions and you don't have the answer to them, there's an opportunity to do work in that moment. Waiting on the result of what you think you need doesn't value and, and show appreciation for the grace and the, the result, the resources that you already have. So now when you want this story to exist, start writing the synopsis, give me the title, Work with a graphic designer to see what the cover art looks like. Those are things that you can control. And that's the other part about creativity is there is so much that you can't control mm -hmm. until you really focus on what you do have control of. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you may be working a job that requires 12 hours a day and you only have four hours. What are you doing with the four hours that you do have available? How are you preparing yourself or how does what you do for those 12 hours prepare you or align you for the opportunity that you want to exist in um, later on that you have a desire for. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So plan and execute, basically. Say it again? Plan and execute. That's basically it. Yeah. And, and, and I, I would say, I think plan, yes. I'm saying have an idea and execute. Because anyone who had a plan prior to 2020, prior to 2020, it failed. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Literally, it failed. Yeah. yeah. I think plans are important. I think decisions are more valuable. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So it seems like we have 20 minutes left. Uh, so, TC Nyron, uh, any more questions you have for him before we? Uh, he says his final thoughts, and then he shares his social media. No, no, I, I mean, we did a deep dive on me today, so I'm good. <laughs> yeah, well, well, you know, let, not to interrupt, man. It, it just kind of came to me. I think the reason I wanted to have this conversation with you, Diamond, is that I think it's important that guys, men, black men, black males, have a space to share and have conversation where it's not about what it's not, right? I think. You know, as, as you talk about mastering creativity, the ultimate creative piece that exists is you and your life, right? And I think if we can master, or when we learn to master our emotions and we become more okay with being alone, the better we are for ourselves and everyone around us. And so, TC, when you talk about confidence and courage, it comes from knowing that I may make a decision that others may not agree with, they don't see it, they don't understand, and that may create some separation. Mm -hmm. Now, and I know that I'm, I'm going to have, there will be a point that I'm going to have some emotions, but I understand how to master them, meaning I understand how to utilize them to my benefit. When mm -hmm. those two variables exist in a healthy way, everything else is not it, everything goes from impossible to impossible Whew. because it's all centered around you and the decisions that you make we don't control the results at all there have been there have been there have been paintings that i've done i remember my first painting <laughs> i did and it was very modern very uh kind of modern abstract and my dad was like Oh, I can just put, I can use it as a court board. I can just put my papers on there 
but I'm working on it. And my idea is I can just put a thumbtack and I'm like, Dad, that was my first art piece that was created. <laughs> right? That's what he saw. Mm. But understanding your audience and who you're wanting to connect with, their interpretation of what you've created may not matter to what your objective is and what your desires are. Because when I share my painting with someone else, they wouldn't have given me 300 bucks for it, at least, for my very first painting. So mm. I'm saying that to say is that people are going to say some things that may hurt your feelings and uh, that may put your emotions in spaces that you don't prefer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which also may create moments and times where you're alone. Now, don't conflate lonely with being alone. Lonely is a description of your feelings. Alone is your state of being. Mm. So being okay with being alone and mastering your emotions or understanding how to utilize your emotions, that will shift how creative you are in how you make decisions in your life. And you ultimately become the masterpiece of what you've mastered. Yes. Mm. Mm. Let's go. Okay. Let's go. I like that. Definitely. Like that. <laughs> Let's go. All right. You know, and even, man, that, I'm, I'm sorry. Right, I, I, I keep, I keep, I, man, I'm on this man, this man thing. I, I, man, there's so many spaces where we, we, we don't exist. I think, you know, even as we talked about overworking, I think be a be a man who exerts himself, puts forth effort, and not overwork. That's the enemy. Like that's the that's yeah. that's where we create the casualties of our lives because we've overworked. Anything that grinds is not good. You you right. got a car, right? Yeah. If your brakes are grinding, that's a signal that there's a problem. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's yeah. gonna hit home for me. I ain't gonna lie. Hey, home for me. Yeah, Mister, I'm at my peak for twelve hours a day. <laughs> Listen, even if even if we take it from a, from a sexual standpoint, if you're at your peak, right? If you're at your optimal position for twelve hours, that's gonna hurt. Yeah, like it's not it's not realistic. Yes. Yes, and there's the reason why they yeah. they give that little warning label when you take that blue pill if it's erect for more than four hours, you got to go to the hospital. Well, you I don't know? know anything about that. <laughs> I'm, not I'm just saying. That. I'm just saying. It's an example. It. It, it's yeah. an example. To lead to that too, like you're right. Like the whole grinding stuff. It sounds cute on paper, but in the long term, it hurts you. And it that's does. why a lot of men, specifically, we get a lot of chronic conditions, high blood pressure. Yes, that's what's killing us, and that's why it becomes a generational thing because that's all we know to do. Right. You yeah. know, I, I think the other thing that we have to consider as we talk about making decisions is. Why do you have to work that job that you don't prefer to work? Is that because you've made a decision to be responsible or have to maintain some things that you didn't, that you really didn't want to prioritize? And so, and I don't know you you all's age, but I think as it relates to women, right? I think that we position ourselves to uh, like, to make sure we don't do permanent things with temporary women or permanent things with temporary people yeah yeah right yeah. because yeah. permanent means it's right. forever yeah yes right so that's another part about the consideration that you have i know for me i haven't had the, i don't have the responsibilities of children currently uh or my own children uh i don't have the, the the i don't have to prioritize someone else over me and what i want to do which goes back to when you master the ability to be alone and master your emotions, it, it's all okay. Now you're okay with that that situation or that young lady or that situationship where, you know what, it didn't work out the way I thought. I'm cool. You know, this is what I want to do. She really doesn't want to do that. Do I really want to prioritize her preferences or her desires over mine at this point? No. That answer should so, always be no. Right. Well, yes. and, and I, yeah. until you want something different. When you want yeah. a different outcome, you make different decisions. I also yeah. think, you know, I think it's fair to understand that men, from a social standpoint, social economics uh, standpoint, men don't peak until after they don't. The the peak doesn't start to rise until after thirty three, after thirty five. Wow, be okay with that, yo. Like I, I, I don't believe that. 
No, yeah, I mean it, it's and that's, listen, you could believe it. It's evident, right? Yeah. Like it. That, those are. I'm. 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 I mean to say facts, right? Because those. Those are. Those can't be changed. From a general standpoint, as a. As a you know, there are anomalies, right? But generally speaking, men st- don't start to peak till after thirty three. I hit. I realized I hit six figures the first time in a year. I think two thousand. 2018 mm. right i mean i'm gonna tell you this i had just come out of a relationship that october 2017 october 2017 that was actually domestic violence related oh boy uh, where I so, had wow. press charges uh fell out, like all kind of stuff and at the end of november my birthday was november 22nd the end of the year i said the 24th no oh, wow yeah, yeah. Uh, Sagittarius love, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you just had a birthday. So yep. so I said to myself, at the end of that point, I was like, I'm not going to focus on women, sex, a woman, any type of pleasurable, romantic relationship with anyone until I hit $10,000 in the bank. And, and oh. I was kind of, I was instructed to that, to do that. I was, I think I was listening to TK Kirkland. Uh, who's a comedian, who is an artist, right? Was creative. This was some of the instruction that he shared is that, you know, men shouldn't be dating until I think they got $10,000 in the bank. I said to myself, when I, after I have $10,000 in the bank, that's when I open up to the idea or the possibility of dating or seeing someone. Yeah. In my mind, I figured by August, I'll be there. I was there before the end of January. Wow. And didn't even realize it until I looked back. I was like, "Oh, I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm halfway through January. I got seventy five hundred dollars in the bank. I've got an account that I've already done the work for. They're paying me five thousand dollars." And I was like, "I'm over. I'm at ten thousand dollars already." Mm. Because of my ability to focus. And focus on something that was tangible. Now, I didn't know exactly how it would happen, and, and I was it wasn't left up to this magical, you know, work hard like ah, that's that's a farce, that's not even real. What I started to do was pay attention to opportunities that would afford me the op- the chance to get to what I wanted, right? Even if it's unconscious. And so what I'm saying is having these ideas. And Nyron, I'm saying even if you write them down, but saying them aloud is another way of sharing and expressing and making these ideas tangible in the best way that you have available. From a spiritual standpoint, it's the same idea as a prayer. You're not asking for this magical thing to happen. You're, you're, you're making an expression or sharing an expression verbally for what you want or what you have a desire for. Mm-hmm. It's it's the same as when we talk about casting a spell, spelling words. You're you're casting a spell. It's you know, not I'm, magic. I'm, I'm gonna you know what I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do today. I already have the title, I have the premise. I think I'm gonna start with the first sentence. I'm gonna write the first sentence down and see how it, it see how it trickles down from there, you know. And I'll challenge you. I, I challenge people to do things in reverse. So sometimes when I'm working with from a business standpoint and they're working on marketing and promotion, it can mm-hmm. be July. I'll tell them, start working on your New Year's Eve promotion. Start working on your Christmas promotion, your holiday promotion. Start working on your Thanksgiving promotion. Start working on October and fall promotion. Your back to school promotion. Your end of summer promotion in August. Your Fourth of July, your America celebration uh, focus in, in in July. You know your your focus of going into summer in in, in June. Mm. Your May focusing on mothers. You know what I'm saying your April focusing on holidays, Ramadan, all, like all of those. You know Ramadan, Easter, all those type of religious holidays. For spring break, then keep going back to March is what is it sitting around. Um, it's raining more. It may be St. Patrick. Yeah, like like you know, going to February is what Valentine's love, sports, Black History Grammys, Month, awards, yeah. Black History really? Month, and now before you know it, you're back at what January. Yeah. So I'm saying, start at the end of what you want. 
because you know it's coming. Yes. You're expecting it to happen already. I literally, I probably sounds crazy. I literally drive in my car interviewing myself. So that when opportunities and conversations like this show up, I practice, I'm prepared. Mm, okay. Just like you did, I gotta make sure my elbow is aligned with the, the goal. So when I shoot, I hit the shot every single time. Or I'm at least in a position to take the shot. Right. Dude, I feel like this is a therapy session now. Like you you mentoring us right now. <laughs> Yo, like you it's really mentor, inspirational speaker, writer. <laughs> Everything, <laughs> producer, you right? really been touring us. My, my, we're we're only in our thirties. We're in our thirties. I just turned thirty. Yeah, yeah, so really. Just, turned, just turned thirty. Yeah. Yeah. Just turned thirty. Yeah. So, are y'all all in the same geographic location? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Where is this? Where? Queens, New York. So, listen. If you get as ten, twenty. 5, 10, 15. If each one of y'all, you get me, you get me, you you find five other people a piece, I'll come up there and we do this in person. How much of them? You just find five other people. Like you find, like Diamond Five, Diamond, if you find five, TC, you find five. And I'll come up there and I will do this in person. I, I don't mind doing that. Noted. Huh? Noted. Like, like, <laughs> no, no cap. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's let's you know, and because I, I think it's important. And what we'll do, we'll call it a. Um, I said, uh, from impossible to impossible. You should put that on a T-shirt. From, from impossible yeah. to impossible. I, I I thought about it. So do this. Send me the artwork, and I'll put it on there. That's me understanding. I don't have. I've got the idea. I don't have the time to design it. Mm. But if you if, if you find those five other people. We can work through getting a location. Uh, I'll come up there, and and I'll make a t-shirt. I can make a t-shirt. I'll make the graphic. I'll make the, the flyer, the promotional for it, you if we want to make it that type of thing. Have you came to Queens before? No. no. I've been in New York. I mean, I've been to, like, the, to the city. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. Uh, well, I, I, I think I can find five people. I think I can. You like know, and I'll be honest. Or five together. Five apiece. That's 15. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. And, and I'll be honest. If it's, if it, if it, if it's more feasible and tangible to do it online, I'm with it. Let's do it. Okay. No, I, I love the idea. Because yeah. it, what I'm saying is that, like, 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 ideally, it would be super dope to come there and do it. Understanding there's so much of what we don't control that exists with with the Omicron and all this kind of stuff. Let's 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 commit like say if we could do it in person, let's do it. If it's more efficient and better and faster to do online, I'm, at that point I know you can find five people and we can do it next Sunday. If, no, if you if you want to do that, like I'm saying, no, like we're not going to be here next Sunday, but I think after that, <laughs> no, we're no, gonna, we're gonna no, we're supposed to go to Magic City talk. in Atlanta. We're gonna talk, D. We're, we're supposed talk. to okay. We talk more about it, yeah. We're gonna talk. Okay. Listen, I mean, if listen, do y'all need to come to Dallas? I've never been to Texas. I've been honestly, I've 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 been dying to go to Dallas. I've been to I got, I got fam to there. I, I, yeah. I'm not listen, gonna lie. what I, what I, and I ultimately what I'm saying, let's do something again. You know what I'm saying? And and, and let's let's be intentional about uh not just growing it, but maturing what this experience has been because growth happens if you keep living you're growing you know what i'm saying yeah. if, you're, if you're not growing you're dying i just i wanted i wanted to just grow i wanted to mature you know what i'm saying just the interaction and the dynamics that we have and being able to share and, and converse uh and, and really not just share ideas but share instruction man like i've, I've got i've got yeah I've, I've got resources from people from manuals to to all kinds of stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like y'all should probably be reading and learning more about the blockchain, right? Like I'm, I mean, we're, I'm already, I'm already, I'm on it already. So NFT, we're talking about crypto. Yeah. I'm, I'm so on we're, it. We're talking about all the full human experience, particularly. I'll say from a black male standpoint, 
but any and I, I can speak i can personally speak with everybody i've done work with bishop td jakes to kenneth copeland to executives with lenovo to meeting with the the secretary of education um uh to producing music for my last year i got placed in the four was um um that's no the bachelor oh okay right so I, as y'all heard and now you keep jokingly saying like man what else do you do like, <laughs> it's, it's all the same approach bro it's all the same approach to what these opportunities are and that's how i'm able to utilize them mm. let's go all okay. right um any any final thoughts for our, for our audience well i'm sorry tc Nairon, any more questions you have Nairon, well, basically man. the questions because Okay. My questions are so. All right, you go. So, D, what final thoughts? Any final thoughts? Yeah, my final thought is to live with reality in mind as you dream mm -hmm. and be willing to make that happen alone because you've never dreamed with anyone else anyway. <laughs> and when I when I say that, I mean have these ideas, make them reality. The best idea is the one that you can finish today. Does it have to be complete? No, because complete doesn't mean finished. Finished is in a moment. But there's And there's always a time, there's always an opportunity for there to be greater, for there to be more, for there to be something additional or improvement. But just be focused on the best idea being the one that you can finish today. Okay. Absolutely. How, like how can they find you? How, 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 how can they connect with you? Man, listen, connecting with me, first of all, through y'all, y'all are my plug, y'all to connect. So if you want to get to me, you got to go through them. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And so, <clears throat> Great marketing. That's one. Great marketing. That's one. I mean, just online, you'll see the hashtag. I mean, my, 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 my name down here at IMD Walk. That's on all platforms from LinkedIn to Facebook to Twitter to um, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, IMD Walk is everything. Um, and like I said, if, if there is a moment, please reference this conversation that you saw. But just know that these are my plugs. You know what I'm saying? If you want, if you want the best rate, you know what I'm saying? You gotta go through the plug. You gotta go through my people. So DC, uh, TC, Diamond, and Iron, they gotta go through you, man. They gotta oh, go through right. Much appreciated. Thank you for that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Definitely. Thank you for that. Thank you. Yes. Definitely. Okay. Well, right. that's that's the end of the episode 32. D, thank you so much for this. You dropped. Thank so you. Yeah, thank you. It was like you just hit us hard, balls on top of balls on top of balls. And it, it felt like a therapy session. I <laughs> <don't know. laughs> you talking about a bunch of gems. You came from the mic. <laughs> He uses a hands and gems. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank Appreciate you so everything. much. Thank no, 100%, man. I, you know, this is, this is, I'm with it. Um, and I just appreciate the opportunity to, um, to share. You know what I'm saying? Like, like said, whatever you need me to, to do, whatever you, you know, whatever question you need to ask, man, please ask it. Questions are the gateway to understand it. Ask it, man. Like there is no dumb question. It's only dumb to not question. You know, and just uh just 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 you know, I'm here. I got you. When Thank I can you. hey listen, Thank when I can, when I can't, I might have to say no. I don't understand because you got like 15 <laughs> jobs. <laughs> <It's too tiny>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. Um that's the end of the episode. Um, thank you. And uh that's about it, y'all. We yes. out. All right. Peace. Later. Peace. Run.